have you thought about it? If you've not been a newcomer in a while, what's it like to be a newcomer uh, to go to a new church? Heard this uh, preacher was up and he's preaching a great sermon. And uh, I done wrong? No? Yeah, okay. He, obviously it wasn't me. He was up preaching a great sermon and he made a great point. And uh, all of a sudden, the guy, somebody that was new, sitting there, never been to that church before, said, Amen, shouted it really loud. And everybody stopped and turned and looked at him and glared at him. And so the preacher kept preaching. He preached a little while longer, and he made another really good point. And uh, the newcomer said, Praise the Lord. And everybody just stopped and turned and looked and glared at him like, what in the world's wrong with you? And so one of the ushers came over to him and said to him, said, uh, could you please be quiet? We don't do that here. <laughs> and he says, oh, I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But since I found Jesus, I just get so excited I have to shout about it. He says, well, that may be so, but you didn't find him here. And... <laughs> And that's probably true because that would have to be a dead church. In the dead church, uh, Jesus rose from the dead. So he's not that church. Uh, you don't seek the living among the dead, right? All right. Oh, it looks pretty. pretty. How you doing, Ross? You good? All right. See you later. <laughs> Some of those sitting here may think or act occasionally that as if you have to believe to belong here. Uh, you must be born again. Well, that's true, John 3, 3 and 5, but the truth is you don't have to be born again to attend. And you'll be welcome if you're never born again here at this church. Amen. You always be welcome here. Well, you must place membership. Well, we want you to be identified with us, but the truth is, nope, you can attend here without ever placing membership. I know that's true because I've seen some do it. And it's not a term really in the scriptures that we talk about. We talk about join, identify, associate with placing membership or join the church are all similar terms. There are conservative people that would tell you that and even preach sermons against the idea of joining the church. But Acts 9, uh, verse 26 says, and when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. So I think the concept is correct. It's a biblical concept. Yet we use the word uh, placing membership, and those terms actually don't appear anywhere in Scripture. Uh, Letters of commendation were taught in the scriptures are not necessary. Nice things to do, but not necessary. You yourself are your own letter of commendation. Basically, we know, though, that those who float from church to church, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Those who float from church to church, who really never make a commitment who really never put themselves under the oversight of elders anywhere, are really, their spirit is in violation of the scriptures, their attitude. Maybe not all their deeds, but the idea in scripture is to put yourself under the oversight of an eldership. Amen? Amen. Uh, but still, you don't have to identify with us to come. We want you to come anyway. Amen? And, and I hope that message comes through. So I want to, if you will, just allow me a few minutes. I, I'm going to try to be quick. I want to look at eight scriptures. Can we do that? And just quickly see how that over and over again, it's taught, and this point is driven home, uh, the basic truth, why you don't have to believe to belong in our services. Okay? Let's go to that whole list. There it is. I can quit now. So... I know some of you wish I would right now, but let's, let's go through that as quickly as we can. The thirsty and the hungry are welcome here. Isaiah, I'm going to use Isaiah. He read a moment ago, Revelation 22, 17, but the origination of that is Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Well, how can you do that with no money? Because you don't need money. Come, buy and eat. You come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. 
So uh, from the, all I can say to you is if you're hungry or thirsty for more of the word, I'd say come thirsty, my friend. So uh, if you're hungry and thirsty to learn or to hear what's taught here, amen. That's what we want. So you don't have to believe to belong in this service. The thirsty and the hungry will always be welcome here. Secondly, the overworked and overloaded are welcome here. In Matthew 11 and verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now that's the words of the Lord Jesus himself. If you are overworked, and many of you are, I mean, you're exhausted. You come here on Sunday morning, and you're just flat exhausted. It seems like instead of things getting easier at work, they just get harder, and you more jobs required. So if you're overworked, or you're just overloaded with cares, there are so many things plaguing your mind right now that you have a hard time in even focusing on what I'm saying. You have so many things pulling at you right now. And you know how church is so comforting? You're welcome to come here and sleep. I know that's true because I see some doing it. So you don't have to believe to belong here. The overworked and the overloaded are welcome. Amen. If that's where you are this morning, you're welcome to be here. The children and the babies are welcome here. In Matthew 19, verse 14, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Children are like heaven already. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? So if you have babies that cry a lot, bring them. If you have children that have a problem sitting still, if they're ADHD plus three, it's okay. You bring them right on. We love them just the same. Amen. And we'll do our best to teach your children about Jesus if you'll let them go to Bible class. So you don't have to believe to belong here. The children and the babies are all welcome here. And we will let them cry all they want because if you don't ever have a crying baby in your church, it's because that church is all old and it's dying. We want crying babies here. And then the drawn and the given are welcome. That's people who have had a spiritual experience, but they're not sure what's going on in their life yet. In John chapter 6 and verse 37 it says, And that the Father gives, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. We're not going to run you off if you feel that the Lord has given you something. He's worked on your heart. Or John 6 and verse 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So if you feel like God's already working on your heart, drawing you in, we're never going to run you off here. If you have been drawn somehow, or if you think that somehow God's already given you salvation, you come right on. We want you here. You don't have to believe like Rex Dutton on every little point. So if you hear me say something weird, that doesn't mean you shouldn't attend here. We still want you to come. Amen? The drawn and the given are welcome. And then the invited and the unknown are welcome here. In Matthew 22, verses 8 and 9, it says, Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited... So there were people that they knew that they invited. Those who were invited were not worthy. They didn't want to come. Verse 9, therefore go into the highways and as many as you find, people you don't even know who they are, invite to the wedding. So if you've been invited to church here this morning, we definitely want you here. Somebody invited you. But if you're somebody who feels like you're unknown, no one here even knows who you are. You kind of slipped in the back, found a little place to sit down, and you don't think anybody even knows you're here or knows who you are. That's okay. You come right on. We want you to come. You don't have to believe to belong here. The invited and even the unknown are welcome here always. Amen. And then... The afflicted and the homeless are welcome here at Bell Shoals. In Luke 14, verses 21 through 23, it says, The master of the house said to a servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, 
the maimed and the lame and the blind. Those are the people that are afflicted into this world that have many troubles. Verse 22 says, And the servant said, Master, it is done as you've commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out in the highways and hedges. People living underneath hedges. Go out of the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. So if you're afflicted today, you have a sickness, disease, a problem, a malady, or if you just have had it rough in life. But if you're diseased this morning and you need a prayer, we want you here. We want to pray for you. In fact, we have a special time of prayer. If you fill out that yellow card on the back, you'll find a place that we'll actually have prayers for those who request it tonight at the evening service just for that. If you're homeless and you're in need of help, you've come to the right place, but you want to be with us on a regular basis. We're more likely to help you that way because we'll know you better. So come and keep coming, and we'll do all we can. Amen? You don't have to believe. We want you to believe, but you don't have to believe to belong here in this service. The afflicted and the homeless are welcome. And then the rich and the poor are welcome. The rich and the poor. James 2 verse 2 says, For if there should come into your assembly a man with a gold ring, or gold rings actually, in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes. So if you come in wearing... Mike's tie, we want you here. If you come in here wearing flip-flops and blue jeans, we want you here, amen? So if you're rich, you're stressed, you need to be here. If you're poor, you're struggling, and you need to be here. So you just come right on. It's because you don't have to believe, we'd love you to, but the rich and the poor, they all belong here, and they'll all be welcome here, amen? And then finally, the uninformed and the unbelieving are welcome. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 23 through 25, Therefore, if the whole church come together in one place, that's kind of what we're doing here, right? And all speak with tongues. Well, I don't know if we do that much, but and there, although I've heard some weird stuff from time to time. And there come in those who are uninformed or unbelieving. Will they not say that you are out of your mind? <laughs> That's probably been said about us a couple of times. Verse 24, but if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, most people think that probably refers to the idea of when we're singing or when we're praying. He is convinced by all. He is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed and so falling down on his face he will worship God and re report that God is truly among you I'd love for you to feel that way if you're new to us today you may not but I'd love for you to too but if you're uninformed and you'd like to know more or you're unbelieving you're skeptical you are not even sure if you should even consider reading the Bible little less whether or not there really is a God and you may think well I'm a fish out of water in this building oh no my friend you'd be surprised how many people have gone through those struggles sitting right here isn't that true yeah and then we've been down that road maybe more than you know and we might have something to share with you that would help you to believe but you don't have to believe to belong here but the uninformed and the unbelieving are always welcome and we'd love for you to keep coming because we actually do want you to believe we really do. So whether you're thirsty or you're hungry or you're overworked or you're overloaded or you have kids or babies that are difficult to handle or you feel drawn or given God's working on your heart or you somebody invited you or you just walked in off the street and you're unknown to anybody here or you're afflicted this morning and you're sick or you're homeless, things have gone really bad or you're rich, or you're poor, or you're uninformed, or you're unbelieving right at this moment. We still want you to come, and you're welcome. In fact, I'll go further. All ages, all genders, all races, 
all branches of the military, all social classes, all rich, all poor, all political persuasions, all left-wingers, all right-wingers, all Muslims, all religions, all Catholics, all Jews, all denominations, all creeds, all believers, all agnostics, all atheists, all community volunteers, all community crooks, all scoundrels, all addicts, all alcoholics, all sexual leanings. That's all that call themselves straight, all that call themselves gay, all that call themselves lesbian, all that call themselves transgenders, all marital situations, all single people, all married people, all divorced people, all remarried people, all widowed, all parents, all, all, all are invited here. You're all welcome to be here and to hear about Christ. Amen. We all want you to know more about Christ. Charlotte Elliott wrote a song. She wrote that song because she wasn't well. And they had an event on a particular day to raise money to help her and ladies like her to get higher education, especially if you were children of the clergy, if you will, ministers. And that's what she was. And her brother was trying to do that. She couldn't help. And she was feeling very useless. And she began to sit there and get deeper and darker. And as she got darker in her heart, she began to wonder if she really had a relationship with Jesus or if it was just all emotions and that it wasn't based upon the truth and that she was just hoping she had a relationship with Jesus. Well, she went to bed that night feeling that way, got up the next morning feeling the same way, only worse. And the event was going on and she had to stay at home. She couldn't get out and help. And she felt worse and worse. Finally, she grabbed her Bible and a piece of paper and a pen. And she began to go through the Bible and see if she had just believed on the basis of pure emotion or if there was something really true in the fact that she believed she knew Jesus. And she began to write down the promises and the blessings that led her to write these words, just as I am. Now listen. This was for her own comfort. This was not for you. This was not meant for you. Has it blessed you? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Have you sung this? Just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee, whose blood can cleanse each spot. O Lamb of God, I come just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict and many a doubt, fightings and fears within and without. O Lamb of God, I come just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee I, to find, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, and relieve. Because thy promise, I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine. Yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am of that free love, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height to prove here for a season. Then above, O Lamb of God, I come. So come, just as you are. 
We want you here because that's how we came. We came just as we were, broken, not looking very Christian, needing the Lord Jesus. So if you're here, we want you here to hear, here to hear the good news, and you can come just as you are, that even now you can hear the gospel, you can believe that Jesus Christ is the risen Son of God, you can make that confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the risen Lord. And you can repent of the way you live. Change your heart. We will baptize you even this hour because we want you to be in compliance with the will of God and be saved and be right with God. Whatever your need, we want to help you. If you need to come, come just as you are right now as we stand and as we sing.